on this computer, of course. Where else would it record out in, in, in the cloud? I don't want this on the cloud. People will see it. It'd be embarrassing. <laughs> okay, so we're recording now. Um, thanks for reminding me. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh yeah, so I wanted to I wanted you to use the character palette, and it did also in the assignment. I talked about typing on a path, and I showed you guys how to do that already, but you really haven't done it. So, and and I really don't need you to do it. Uh, probably on some of these logos, you might want to do that. Um, and it, and and for some of these ad designs or the flash ads that might work really well too i can see that that would be a graphic that you that you might want to employ here or a technique you want to employ so but i didn't want to make it into an assignment that you have to do it but i definitely want you to know how to do it so maybe i do have to make it an assignment so you can prove to me you understand how to type on a path and put paths over each other so on and i'll demonstrate that but um Really, and also I want you to play with the, um, the the options on the character palette and how you can take characters and put them together or push them together so they become almost like an object themselves. And it and almost becomes unreadable and like a texture. Reminds me of the retinas uh, uh, wall uh, um, graffiti type art, which is fine. That's a, always a good tool to use. And it's, of course, if you're doing anything that's uh, relative to being um, contemporary uh, street art, then you want to be able to know how to use that stuff. So can I share my screen and just kind of run through this and show you guys what I'm talking about? And, and you don't need to do anything with it right now. You can use, employ it for your logos. If you want to borrow some of these ideas and incorporate them into your logos, that's great. You can do that, but it's really for the next assignment as well. But it makes it, it also well, because I did show you last week about playing with logos and writing, typing different letters on, on separate paths and joining them or moving them either behind each other or in front of each other or flipping them over. So we did a little of that, but that was really um, separate paths that we were, we were using essentially we were using layers like in Photoshop in order to manipulate those. This is a little bit different in that it's text manipulated through the character palette. So if you don't know where the character palette is, well here, let me go share my screen. We're gonna go play with it, okay? Okay, so this is kind of what I was playing with. Everybody can see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, and of course, I always use my name because I know those th five letters, three letters, really, because, you know, I can just look and see the rat right in the center. That's what <laughs> I'm going to be. That's going to be my, I was thinking about using that as my uh, graffiti name for tagging stuff out on walls and stuff, but I thought it would be too obvious. So I'm either going to call myself Ernie Ramirez or Ajax. Just for fun. Anyway. So what I was playing around with here is here's your character palette. And if you don't know where that is, I'll keep it on the white side over here so you can see it more clearly. If you don't know where to find that, you go under type and you find, uh, you choose character, which is your character palette. Paragraph palette shows up on your, whenever you click on, on the content here and it's under, you guys are sitting on top of it right now, but it, it's on your properties palette. And a lot of the, the elements of the character palette are also on your properties palette where you can change the size, the font, and so forth. But what is different is that these, with these four little elements here where you get to change heights, or actually eight elements. And, and if it doesn't show up like this, if it shows up small, uh, let me see, I have to take my glasses off to see. But no, we don't have arrows here. Oh yeah, we do. So sometimes it'll show up like just that. If you had used it or put it away, there's two little arrows, um, a vertical uh, going up and a vertical going down. You just click on those and it'll give you the drop down palette. It might give you four groups of four on the first shot and then a group of eight on the second one. So in this one where I was, where I typed use vertical scale, scale twice, 
I was messing around with these elements here. So when I go highlight that, I'll show you what that does. So with my text tool, we click in here, activate that box first, because that is a text box. So I need to go back to my type tool and click in here. And I, I also messed around before I go do that. I messed around with the, the color, playing with the color palette and just alternating colors for each character or that's in there. And I wanted you to just know that you should think like that too. Suppose you wanted to emphasize uh, one area of a word, like in this case, what would you, what would be the, the accent on vertical? Verts, you emphasize the T and, um, or, and highlight it and everything else was black and you change that to a bright pink or something that would draw your eye to that as as an emphasis to that word and i just wanted you to know and think like that too that you should highlight individual you can highlight individual characters and go and change the color i got to move you guys away from my color palette here i guess i could have done it over there too did it change that i don't even see that it got highlighted there there we go and we'll make it green. So the other ones are not like that. So then click off of it. So I just changed it to green. So we changed this, these three letters back to black. Come on, you little character. I don't want all of them. Oh, because my box is no longer selected. So I can't get that content. Now it is. And we'll take the, the S and the E. Wow, it's not letting me do that when I go in there. Why not? Yeah, it lets me do all of that, but just not that. Okay, so I just want to change it back to black. And you can use registration or you can use um, the regular colors. So we'll just take that S out of there. It's not letting me go and insert my cursor into my text. Maybe it's because I went and changed so many things in here. I did play a lot with the scale and, and the verticality of it. Okay, so I'm just going to change those two letters because they allowed me to highlight them back to pink. And you can see that that becomes an emphasis of color incorporated into a, a, a text or a word. So this would work really well, and it's not great for the logo. It might function for your logo, but really this purpose for this would be in uh, the masthead or something like that in a magazine or the title of an article that you might be inserting into a magazine or into a, um, a web page so that you can emphasize those areas. And that's all I wanted to show you that I just want to make you aware of those things so you can begin to think like that, that you're in control of doing all this and you can change these things and make them uh, more poignant visually for your viewer. And it's really all about your viewer, right? We're attracting our viewers, we're, we're, we're catering to them. Okay, so anyway, I was playing when I was messing with these things, these, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I was playing with these a lot, um, and I took them for a ride. So I was, I was playing with the vertical scales over here. So if you go to this one where you up on the upper right hand corner, this is about the letting. So the letting is about where your, the space between the lines of your text. And what I was doing was bringing them together to become a more of a solid object. Now you could have done this also by typing each one of these things like we did last week on its own separate path and then moving them next to each other so that they were, we were eliminating the space between them. But if you didn't wanna do that, you can go and do this. So this, you can use these elements here. So auto will bring it back down to a scale where it becomes automated. Now it went up to that to 14.3, it should have been on auto. So let's see if I can highlight that and change it to six. It's not moving, is it? So 48, it's just moving. It's moving away from this one because it's 
it's joined in that. So it thinks that those things are together. And really, I only want these, this group of works, maybe just that to move. No, make two of them to move together. So I have to reset, basically. And take out all of that 14 points and make it zero. And then it becomes, they become a texture that it's on top of each other. So, and I could go and I could have edited that so that all of that, if say that was Universal Studios or something, and I had Universal in the background in black and then Studio in front where it says scale in different colors, that perhaps you might be able to read that, especially if I change the Universal part to a different size font compared to the, the scale in the front or over, I should say over rather than in the front. Because really that's what I did is I made it go over. And, and you can see where the cursor is down here. So this is telling you that this line is down here and I move that line up to there on top of the other one. Now, can I even get back in there and do that now that I did that? Maybe I have to undo, huh? Is, do you guys understand what I just did? Does that I'd make have sense? to go back and look at the commands again, but I, I'm seeing what you did. Okay, well, and, and, and this is all just in this one little section here. Now these, if I go and, and take, for example, these two letters again and use the, this palette where it says they're minus 90 right now. Minus 90 means I already closed them together. I highlighted them and brought the, the characters together so that they were touching. So if I go the opposite direction and start moving them apart, they will, the letters themselves will begin to separate from each other and become further apart. Now, this can be really good if you wanted to spread. Again, if it, it would be something you would do on a masthead or the um, introduction of an article, the title of an article, so that it spread across the whole page. So you were going from one end of the page to the other. And of course, that also is going to have to deal with the title or, or relate to the amount of characters in the title of that um, uh, article so that because if you only had three letters, it's not going to make a whole lot of sense. You couldn't spread them all the way across the page because there was be so much space between them, people wouldn't read that. But they need so that you need to have a reasonable, a sense of reasonable, reasonable space between them that people will be able to see the word, the letters, and assemble them as a word. So some of them, like I could use that whole thing, use vertical where I could highlight that whole thing. And it could be across the whole page because that has enough characters in it. So I could change the scale of it and the space between them. And it would run from, from this side over here to this side over there. And that would be okay. That would, and it would be a solid uh, lead into whatever is below it, whatever content is below that picture or on the rest of the content on the page. Or maybe it's just a graphic. It could be just a graphic thing that you're playing with, and that could be fine too. So that this is why I wanted you to, to play with the, the uh, elements on this palette. And of course, this one is just the type and scale. The first one is choosing just like you would in, in points over here. It's just the points of the scale. But then you go into these, like where, where we're doing the kerning, then you're bringing letters together. So instead of pushing them apart, so <coughs> let's see if I can make these two letters attack each other. I guess I shouldn't call them attack, huh? So can we go there with this and, and change that? Mm, if I do minus 10, that's not moving. Optical we want. Yeah. They, look, uh, they didn't seem to change at all with that. So I think I have to go back to the original content before I made all these changes. Because <clears throat> I think I distorted it somewhat already and put it through so many of these little tasks that it can't remember 
um, what is available to it and what isn't. But anyway, that's what this would, the kerning would have done was it either spreads the letters apart again, the same idea, well, actually it pushes them together. And, and it's, it's actually the characters that they use to describe that on your character palette are V and A. And the reason they chose those two letters is because they match up with each other. The V has the, uh, the angle, the same angle as the A, so they could be butted up to each other and connected into the same form. So really it's, it's spreading the space. It's a way to illustrate how to spread the space apart from each character. See if I did that in here, let's see if I can go highlight these two things. And if I went to the VA and made them closer together, <clears throat> they're not changing either. Is it because I'm not selected the box? I guess not. I guess my box wasn't selected and it's not gonna work. And the box definitely needs to be active when you're highlighting it and, and making these changes. And it still didn't make any change there with those letters. And some of the fonts won't do this. They won't, they won't allow you to join them together. So you do have to go look at what font you're using too. They won't let you move them close together or they will. And some of them won't change vertically because they, they're written, the program is not written for them to, because it is a program, whoever's writing the fonts, it's not written for you to allowing you to make those kinds of changes. Because I know I did it here with uh, my name here where I highlighted those three letters and, and spread them apart going here. Did I do that? Yeah, see now they're, on, they're next to each other, they're on top of each other and all touching where the, this is these, the A and the R here on the vertical um, path, there that's standard. That's just regular space between the characters that's set up when you're typing with that font. But in this case, I was able to, by using this tool and, and making them 18, I brought those letters together and you can see, let's see, let's zoom in what happens here when you zoom into those. You can see where they, the um, font overlaps the other one and they begin to merge together where the stroke that's on them, because I did put a stroke on them, where the white is beginning to merge into the font of the other one. So what happens if I made it bigger? I don't know. But we could also go and change the highlight that again. Let's see if we can go change them and make them overlap. This is what I do, right? Go, oh, what happens next? What would happen if we did this? Because none of this is, this is all experimental right now. So I'm not trying to make anything. I'm just playing with the tool. So what if I did minus 75? Yeah, so that's gonna pull them apart a little bit. And what if I go the opposite direction? That's gonna push them pretty far apart. Well, further apart than they were, but it's really going back to where it was because I had them at minus 100. And I kind of like them, uh, I don't know. Did I want them bunched up? I mean, what if I highlight the whole thing and say minus 100 to that? See, because now it's telling me Will that work? That makes an interest, more interesting type of, of word or logo. Are you guys okay reading that vertically or do I need to make it horizontal for you? No, it's okay. Because you know Maybe. that's easy to do. This is on a path and you could just go and rotate it. Can't I go rotate that? I should be able to by doing that. Yeah. And change the access of it. So you can see it like that. But some people don't like reading things vertically or, and, and horizontally and upside down. But all of those things can be tools that you wanna use in design. I mean, some of them like this could have been on the side of a magazine over here. You know, the, some people or some magazines, some elements in, your, in a website have it butted right up against the edge and it's all vertical. So let's go zoom out so you can see the rest of this. Move my page with my hand over here. So we're back where we were. Not really, because I had more showing before, huh?
Okay, so are you getting the idea what, what I want you to do here? And, I, and this isn't an assignment, this is just uh, something to experiment with. Although I did think of it for your next assignment where I was, because it's talking about shaped boxes. And so I, I chose to just change the height of the fonts here in this. So we have different scales and different fonts and, and then adjust the space between them. So that if you did have a box underneath that, so if we went back to our pen tool and you put a shaped box right in here, so it follows that. And close the box there and then choose a color for that. So if I got red and green, what would be a good flag? Blue, oh, red, green, and blue, RGB. And then send that to the back. So go to object and arrange and send that to the back so the text is on top of it. So that it's just a shape box. Now it didn't have to be that because I could have done, uh, let's just say delete. Can we just delete that box and all those things? Because what could have also been interesting in shaping that box is taking the pen tool and starting where I began again and go up to the top of the A and then over to there and then come down to the top of this one and then to the top of that and then making this shape that actually that should have gone there but I was a little sloppy because I didn't zoom in but now it's going to have an M, a shape behind it, which is my other first initial, right, for my initials. So that kind of makes sense to work with my last name in a way. And then we'll just fill it again with a lighter blue this time because it might be more interesting. And then send that to the back. Yeah, this, the green and the blue are way too close together in value tone. So rat looks great, though, doesn't it? Oops, didn't mean to do that. With the blue is what I meant. So I want to change the color of that. The pale blue is just not, maybe darker with the rest of those colors. Yeah, that works better. Now it looks like Bataratoman. <laughs> I can make a movie out of this. <laughs> this could be the logo for a new movie. Anyway, so that's all I was getting at there. And, th and your next assignment has to do with making shaped ads. Oh, if you're coming out that door, my dog just came in the back door, but you're okay right now. You okay? Good. For now. Okay, so any questions about that? No, I, I think if... I can go back and look at it again. Uh, I'll be able to manage it. Well, I only, and I only played with those few ones. I mean, we can go, you can go and write, oh, well, I did want to show you doing typing on a path too, because I want to remind you how to do this. And as long as we're making a recording, this is a good thing to do right now so that you can follow this and you'll have it as a document. So let's get all this crap, I mean, stuff, wonderful things out of here and use, I just moved them off to the side, right? Select them all and just push them away. Oh, I should say that, that I did, um, when I, I did the same thing here that I did here just by changing the scale of that letter. And then once it changes in scale, there's more space between it. So you have to use either the kerning or the tracking in order to bring the letters back into alignment so that it doesn't look weird. It doesn't look like you shrunk a letter and there's a bunch of space around it because you want it to be readable. And I just wanted the, the wave thing going through it. Okay, back to the side. So what I wanted to show you then for typing on a path, um, we'll use the, and, and the reason I want to do, and I did show you this, I think in the beginning, I think in our first class when we were doing this, but I wanna show you uh, how to do vertical, well, I guess inside and outside type. So to hold the shift key down, this makes it a perfect circle, right? We don't really even care. Well, I'm gonna make it a color. I'm gonna just, I'm gonna use this as a base. We'll make it a nice pink because everybody loves pink. Look at how dead that gets. And this is CMYK. CMYK is all about your um, your inks dies really 
because that's really plumish to me. Can you use that word? Is that a word, plumish? <laughs> I don't know if it is. All right, we'll make it bright, see if that works. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now because I'm going to use this as a base element, I'm just going to copy and paste it twice because I know I want to use it twice. So I'm just going to take this first one, and I could have done this by clicking on it, and it gives you the same width. And of course, it's all equal because it's I did held the shift key down. So it's 18.3.6 across, and I don't need an extra one. But if you click, just click on the L the shape itself, that window will pop up. And if you say, OK, it will copy another one for you automatically of the exact same one that you had. So we're putting that over there. There should be another one there. I'm going to take this one. This is the last one that was made, I think. So we'll see when we get there. So I'm going to convert this one into a type path. And you do that by going to the, did somebody? Just try to add the class, add into the class. I don't know. I can't tell. If I don't, it didn't admit them. No, there's nothing here. Nobody's here. It's okay. So, okay, so um, I'm going to take this tool, the type tool, and go to the second tool down, which is type on a path tool. And then click right in the center. Well, I could click over here if I wanted to, and that would be where I'm inserting the cursor. And normally you would expect this content to disappear. And I didn't, I thought it would disappear because in, in Illustrator, it would delete the content, but it didn't seem to do that. So that's why I made three things because I thought it would take it away. But maybe we'll see what happens here. So I left my A out there. Huh? So I'm just going to highlight that. Come on, highlight to change the size of the font. And I guess I could have just been in the type tool still and changed it, but that's okay. So we're going to put in what, 200, 300. Let's see what 300 points looks like. Disappeared it, way too big. So 200, we'll, we'll see if that works on that path. It isn't that big of a path. Ooh, look at the way that worked all the way around there. So that 200 is really big for that. I didn't expect it to be that large. So we'll go 60, which is fine. That's great, because that's what I, this is the kind of scale I was really looking for because I want to be able to move this to around this, this uh, form here. So we're going to just slide it up here. Yeah, we slid it too far and not far enough, oh, missed it. So these are handles. Remember I talked about these before and they each have the square in them on the sides. Yes. One of them will move around and that will, won't adjust it. This gives it space where it's gonna end, but it's not gonna change this. This is what you use, this one on the left in front of the character in order to move the text around here. And then I want to float this off of that because it should not be, if there were letter characters that came down on top of this and they went into the blue circle, they might be obscured. So I'm going to just have it float by using the last element on your character palette down here, the one on the bottom left on the baseline shift. And I'm going to tell it to increase and you can see how it's moving away from the path itself. It's still attached to that path but it's moving away from it because I asked it to move, gave it some space away from the path. So it just adjusts it. Okay, everybody kind of got that? Yes. Okay, so that, and that's pretty, this is a, should be pretty easy, but this is why I want you to know about this palette because there's a lot of stuff in here that you'll want to use with fonts and adjusting fonts and individual words and even individual characters. Because you can go, everybody knows, right? You can go in here and just go with your type tool and change the color like I showed you. You can change the color of a character, right? So you can go and change the size of it too. So that one's 60. So if I made it 72, right? It's going to stand out as, uh, well, and then you would want it 
would you want it to even be like that? Would you change that character? Maybe you want to go with the aerial black on that. So now it emphasizes that one letter without even having to change the color just by changing the font in there. So in a way, by doing this kind of thing, and this always reminds me of this, so I have to say it, it reminds me of those uh, ransom notes that they cut out of magazines and newspapers and send them to the person who needs to get ransom. But you can use that kind of technique. All right, does that make sense? So now I'm going to, I mean, I don't know that I want that, but I want you to know about it. I'll leave it there for now. I have to get my legs out from under that little thing and open this door. Ma, did you need to come in here? Yeah. See, one of my dogs is barking to because he wants to come see me. The other dog wants to get away from me. Crazy. But that's the way it is. Okay, so now we have one path here. So now I'm going to go and take this, the second path. Sec, uh, or this, which one is, which is on top? That one's on top, okay. And you know, to find out what was on top, I could have just sent it to the back or something, but I just dragged it over the work I was doing because it would tell me what's on top. And I know I made this one first, so this one's behind that. And, and we all know already this, it has everything to do with the sequence and that you're making objects. The first thing is always on the bottom. The last thing you made is always on the top just so you remember that kind of thing. Okay, so we're gonna go select this one and I'm gonna get, because we know there's a fill in there already, I'm gonna take that fill out. Cause I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is put, well, I guess I, yeah, I guess I'll do that. Sorry, what did you do? You, you took the fill out? Yeah, I just clicked on, on this little dot right here in the lower left-hand corner. Well, I could have done it over here on this palette too. Sorry, where, where did you do it? Okay, I selected it and then it used to be what it was, let's see, get my eyedropper tool. It used to be that color. Yeah. So if you look over here on the upper where they on my color palette here, and I guess over here too, I have the same option. Either this is the properties palette, which has the option to tell it to have no fill. It would still keep the stroke on it. But I can also tell it to have no stroke. But what if I, the fills here selected and I could just say none? Okay. Yeah, that's my dog. <laughs> Hold on a second. You're going on TV. All right, here's my dog. He's watching you guys now. This is the Hello. one that makes all the noise. He's not afraid of, of Zoom. He just <laughs> wants to bark a lot. Okay, so now you understand how I got rid of that, right? Yes. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to go type on a path there. I'm going to convert it into a, a text path. By going again, and you know where this is, because normally it's on, on the default is your, your T for type. And you go to the little arrow underneath it, and you're going to get the T that's on a slant, which it even says type on a path. So I'm just going to insert my name or insert my cursor in here. And we'll write my name in there. So I'm going to this, and the reason I'm doing this uh, I'll show you because I can't put this on the same path here because it would be upside down. I mean, I suppose I could have showed you that, right? Or it'd be on top of my other name. And what did I change that to? I made it 60 points, I think. So we'll make this 60 also or 48. Okay, that'll work for me. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to the black selection tool and select that. And I get those two little markers. They're on top of each other. One, the one on the right is with these two squares here. The one on the right will allow me to move it this way. If it goes past this line, if I were to continue typing on this path and it went past that line, you would get that little orange or red square with the X, the red X in it, the red cross. And it would tell you there's not enough room on the path 
for that material, for that content. So you, it's telling you, you either need to make another path to make to allow the content to move to the next area or change the size of your font or use less content in that path. But those are all kinds of options you get to use. So to separate them, just so you can see, I'm gonna take this one and, and I didn't mean to do that. Undo that, silly. I wanna move this around. I want that, it's doing it again. Why is it doing that to me? I want this line like that or this way. Yeah. Okay, so by moving, this is the line where I, um, the line on the right hand side, which would have been right here. And I crossed this other line. So it immediately made my, it eliminated my text and put it over here. So in order to get it back, I need to bring this back down over here and the text comes back and it's perfectly right where I wanted it to be. So it sits on that. But if I go and put that on top of that, well, this is great if I wanna confuse people and my job is not to confuse people. <laughs> But um, it is a nice texture, though. I mean, I always look at things as in terms of texture and shape and stuff. And, and the confusion could be really great for some kind of crazy horror movie. But we don't want to do that. What I wanted to show you here, and I should move it up here so you can see it in the center of the screen. Because remember, when we're on this tool, there's that little other little line here which so we got these two lines that are the this is the end this is the beginning this is the center you can take that small little line and push it to the center and so now my name is on the bottom in the center which when i put that on top of this is that on top close but not quite now it's better so now it is right side up and that's the whole purpose of doing this in, in, in at least typing on a spherical form, if you're making a circle, then you need to have two separate paths in order to have one vertical and right side up, and then one below it that's right side up. Now these letters are kind of crunched together and you, and I know you did uh, typing on a path where you had letters meet each other and they didn't look so great, especially if it was angular, they overlapped each other and they looked uh, non-readable and, um, how would you say that? Uh, funky. Okay. Anyway, so what a, to fix this again, we go back to our baseline shift where we used to be going out. Oh, at the highlight. Sorry. Need to be selected because now it's on, I guess the easiest way for you to see this too, because I stacked them up on top of each other is to move it away. And we'll take this one then and highlight that text. Although I don't think I even need to if it's selected with my black arrow tool. I think I should be able to just move it across. Nope, won't do it. You have to highlight it. In Illustrator, that would do it if it was just selected with this black arrow tool. But in this program, it does not. OK, so now what I'm going to do is move this away from the path. So I'm doing negative now. So it's minus points. Whereas before to float that above on this one over here, I had to do plus points above the path. And I have to do much more because I'm moving it all the way from the inside, the vertical line here. And I have to move it out to at least whatever I put here. I don't remember what I put, 10 or something like that. So this time it's got to be 40 or 50 points away from that path in order to look like or to seem like it's the same as that one. Let's see how that works. Oh, we can go change that into a different uh, a font too. So let's see how it changes. Although the space is, that is the same font. Spacing is good. We're going to keep it. So select this or select this and take it and put it right back on top. Okay, so that's all was about making your fonts and your text readable so that it's on the top part of these two paths, you have it uh, readable on, on the uh, upper part of the horizon line and also right side up, because really that's the key here is that the text is right side up rather than upside down. 
because the easiest thing to do would just type the whole thing and then have it run around here, but it'd be upside down down there and it wouldn't make much of a good graphic. And this is beginning to annoy me, this R here. So I had to take it back to whatever it was. What was, what's this one again? What did I use for that? I forgot. Oh, Arial Black, okay. Oh, what did I do? Then how come that's not Arial Black? Because it is Cirrus. That's, yeah, the Minion Pro. Oh. Whoa, look at, I like that. See, we're changing it like that. But also I changed the scale of it. Minion Pro 4, do I want that? No, I want that one up there. So that they're consistent, that's all I want to do. And then I want to change it back to, that was, the other one was 60, I believe. So I just want to get them in line so that you guys can see what it would look like if you were doing a project for somebody and you needed to make it look like just standard good graphics to get your job done and communicates to whoever your client is. And that's how you would do this. And this looks like it's a little bit further apart. And you can also see the, how close together these characters were when they were the inside of this thing. And as you move them away using this tool, they become, they become further apart. Come on, I have to go highlight this one. So I have to go click on that path. And that is something you need to watch too, is how, I don't know which one that is now. It is that one, because it was underneath. So what, I, what I'm gonna show you is how these fonts, ah, it's not selected. Come on, you little chipmunk. Hmm. Maybe that needs to get further away because it's confusing the other one. I'm not inserting my cursor anymore. That's getting annoying. Okay. You are now selected. Yes, there we go. No, I'm not making text paths. So I'm making, I'm accidentally dragging with the text tool and creating text boxes, which I don't want. So I just want to insert the cursor in here. And I guess I have to go back to my text type tool. First, I need to select that and then go back to that tool and get my cursor back in here, which is really in here somewhere. Look at that, that's crazy that I can't do that now. What is happening? Then you'll encounter this. So let me go find out what's going on. Oh, I have to get right on the path in order to get that, to select that. And then I delete unselect it. Okay, let's see if I can change it by just having it selected. No, because this thing's not highlighted. Did I do something? I didn't change, I cha didn't change the font here. I changed the font on the other one. Do I need to be on that path or this path? What if I'm up here? Mm -hmm. Do I want that? I don't know why I can't do that now. Anyway, what I wanted to do was change the distance by moving them closer. I just wanted to, you to observe how the letters get closer together. Do I have to go type it on this path? That's crazy. That's like it's committed to itself. Let's see if I can still move it. Yeah, it moves. That's fine. So if it was moving, I should be able to go in here and insert it. Yeah, that's what I have to do. I have to go with, you have to select it on the path, not on the letters. Because this is where the text, this, the program reads the content or the fonts as being on the path not on the letters themselves because I made this adjustment here. 
So let's see, I had that's minus 49. So I'm going to bring them closer together. And all I wanted you to see was how the letters get closer together as we're doing that. And so now I can go and adjust this again by moving that cursor around. Because this is the end paragraph. And I can just adjust it on that radius. But now you can see that those the letters are much closer together than compared to where they were. But that was interesting that I needed to, in using the text tool, you need to select not on these letters, but on this path in order to, to select them to make changes. So what I think was thinking to do was, um, can I go bold on this one? In the Minion Pro, it doesn't give us that option. Some of them we can go bold, some of them we can't. And I didn't mean to make them all squares, but that is an interesting one. This, uh, the Luminari has to be Italian, the little Luminaris, which again, that's not a bad idea to in, in creating something like this to go and, and change the font from the top and bottom so that they are definitely in, oh boy, that was on the wrong tool. That was kind of interesting though that I did that. I did shape the whole tool because I was on the white arrow tool. So it shaped one of the anchor points. So that could work like that. And, and again, in order to select it, because this one's on top, I need to, if I don't like this there and I really don't like it, I don't like that that close to that path and that close to the shape when it's on top. So I'm going to go back and select it again and move it away until I, until I find the position that I think works. Come on, all of it. <coughs> and And that's gonna be, if that was 39, it just has to be that at least that far apart. I need to have that much space because that looks very similar to what's there. And then now it looks super gothic. And gothic can be good. And line those up, oh, not too far, come on, into the center. Okay. All right, so did everybody understand um, playing with that and, and adjusting that? Because that had to be done on two separate paths so that we could have our text be vertical and readable right side up rather than upside down. Because if I did this, you know, I take this one and push it to the inside. Whoops. <laughs> with this little tool here, this little line right there and push it right to the center. Now it's on the inside. So now if I did, if I take this other line, the outside one, come on, we want this, and drag it around so that it becomes upside down. It's not moving, so this one has to go, huh? Yeah, now I went right and crossed over them. Whoop, who's coming in? So now it puts the content inside. I didn't want to do that. All I wanted was to make it upside down. So it's like that. And then, oh, I can't do that because this line, this one needs to be moved further apart. But now, see that you can't read that upside down. That was my whole point of just doing that. So you don't want upside down text unless it is something that works in your design. Like you were talking or you wanted to be avant-garde. You might be able to do that because if you notice now, nowadays you see lots of um, uh, graphics that have backwards letters in them. And sometimes the whole word is written backwards in a sentence, but it's still readable. So they make it bold enough and simple enough so you can identify it even if it's backwards and that content works. So that's a doable thing. 
So now I'm going to take this little blue arrow, the little blue line here, select that and push it back to the outside and readjust that arrangement. Oh, I have to use this side to push it. So pushing it up as long as, whoops, didn't mean to push that. I meant to push this. Yeah, it should be about right there to be centered and then move it back on top again. Okay. And I just want you guys to see upside down how that doesn't work, but you, if you know it and you think about it, you can use that as a possibility to do something in a design, but it's not going to, you can't turn it into something that you can do all the time. You probably wouldn't want that to be your definitive style. Maybe, I mean, I don't know, maybe you would want it to be your definitive style. Any questions? Okay, does anybody want to show uh, their logos, what they've been working on, so we can look at them? Sure, I, I could do that if you want. Yeah, I have, let me uh, stop sharing and you can go and do that. That'd be great. Let me, let me just wanna... see, probably my program closed, so I, I might have to open it again. Let me oh, just yeah. Okay, no problem. I can, I can keep doing other demonstrations. Okay, yeah, I, I'll open it up again and then. Anybody else, though, in the meantime, want to share any of their stuff? Any of their logos? Nobody. Uh, you can share mine if you want. Oh, yeah, do it. That. Go for no, it. I mean, like, you, you can share mine. <laughs> well, you have to share your screen. Uh, I'm not, right now I'm using two commenters right now, so. <laughs> you're, not, you're not what? I'm not be able to, I mean. <laughs> okay, what are, you, are you trying to say you want me to share your logo? Yeah. That you, that you turned in to you for the assignment? Yes. That's what I thought you were trying to say. So I have to go, um, Jeannie, do you want me to go do that now? Or are you ready? I've got mine. If, okay, you I what? can share mine. Okay, you can go do it. And then I'll share your the work that you turned in at. Anybody else wanna uh, in line to share their logos? Whoa, that's kind of interesting. Are you painting watercolors while you're doing this? No, this was alcohol inks. Yeah, that's intoxicating. <laughs> what are alcohol inks? Oh, they're really cool. I, I, I only learned about them like about a year ago. And they're uh, an alcohol based, uh, really strong dye. And you um, have to use it on like photo paper or something with a shiny surface. And you drop uh, alcohol dilutes it. So yeah. You can spray alcohol on there and then put a few drops of them and then they make all these wild pictures. So I did a lot of work in alcohol inks. Uh, so it is like water. Ago. It's like watercolor, but you're using alcohol instead of water. Right. And it's really, really strong dye. You can like do ceramic work or you can paint on metal or you can do all sorts wait, of wait, cool stuff. Wait, what do you mean you can, you can put this on a, a piece of ceramics and then put it in a kiln and fire it and it will stay? I don't know about firing it. I it's just you can use it on ceramic tile or on uh, uh, stone or on different things that already have a hard surface or non porous surface. And it's but permanent. I don't think you could heat it after. But they're really flammable for one thing. It probably oh well no because the alcohol is going to evaporate. That's not going to it can't. I mean I'd hope. Uh, <laughs> but but is it permanent? This is what I wanted to ask. Very permanent. Yeah. If you spill them on the carpet, you're done for. Okay, but um, um, if it's out, if it's outdoors, will it uh, fade in color? Uh, yeah, I think you're we're supposed to. I didn't, but you're supposed to buy like a spray and put it over it. You know, spray a over fixative, it. Fixative, yeah, a fixative it. and a sealer, right? Okay, that okay. makes sense to me. And then you can actually use. Um, okay, what did I do? You know, like if you have canvas board that you you could do a painting like a. a an oil painting or something on yeah it, it would absorb the alcohol ink but then if you get like a sealant you know um like what they use when they're waterproof uh mold, you know waterproofing a wall or something like that you paint over it and then it makes the canvas board so you can use that for paintings too 
Oh, okay. All right. That sounds good. Okay, so now um, this looks like it's uh, Jeannie. Uh, what's your last name? Reether. Reether. There you can, because I can tell um, that there's an R there. <laughs> and and you wanted it to be vertical like this, right? Yeah. J -R -J -R. It, yeah, just to kind of look so you wouldn't realize it was a letter unless you were realize that's what it was you know unless you you were looking for that but anyway that's um, one thing and, i did and what and what about the line in the the white line in the center i just thought it drew it together you know it kind of made it look like uh an like insignia or something yeah Sorry. well it looks like they're attached like a. Uh, oh am i doing something here oh yes i am i'm pulling the cord on my my laptop and it's sliding okay um uh yeah it looks like they're attached like a um like a, a i don't know needle through through the center of it and it is in the center you can tell okay so here's um i'm i'm looking at this and i'm thinking this might be better because didn't you do the ones also with the uh color on the outside or the inside of the letters last time yeah yeah this color, this alcohol design might have been really nice on the inside of those characters again. Huh. And then and then you don't need the well, I, yeah, what would you do for the background? I don't even know that you need a background. I mean, that's just another option. Otherwise, I would make them the other option I would think of is just make them the no fill at all and put a stroke on them, a bright color stroke so that you have that color coming through again through the whole page. And that might've been a really cool, um, a, a nice idea. Because the, the black, how would I, how the black would I do is so, that? you should try that. The black is so heavy, it's taking away from the background. Okay. They don't, They yeah, it's kind of killing, um, is the background killing the black? No, the black is killing the background because the other, there's it's so painterly and, and the other, it, the black is just, sort of um conquering that that painterly quality although it's kind of nice that it is the opposites of them that it is so um angular and and uh um almost geometric what about so, if it was a dark blue for the letters sorry what about if it was a dark blue for the i think the, the blue would relate more to the background that might work better rather than black that might okay. do the trick too, but also just putting a thicker stroke around them, uh, even a blue stroke around them, and leaving them um, empty in the in center in the um, taking the fill out. I think could you, you're. You, could you walk me through it if I do that? Because I yeah. know I'm gonna. It'll take me forever to try to figure out how to do that again. Okay, select the 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 letters, the box for the letters. Is that is it selected? Yeah, no, it's selected. Okay. So um, see where the you can go to either your well either one where the T is on your on your uh, swatch palette on the right. Yeah. Well, now you got to highlight them again because in doing that, no, not that T. Oh. I'm talking about the black T where where you have the. Uh. <clears throat> okay, highlight them again first. So choose your type tool. Yeah, highlight them. Okay, so. On the swatch palette, where you have the not not that T, go to keep no nope, other way. Nope, to the left. That one, yeah, click that one, and it comes to the front, and that's the fill. So right below that on the palette is a line that's uh, going through the square where it says none. Click yes. that. Okay, now it's going to be none. But now you want to go back to up to the stroke where underneath the T. Go up. Yeah. That one, click that, yeah, and then give it a color or a, leave it black. It won't matter. Maybe, you, maybe the blue. Yeah, dark blue would be good, I think. And it's really hard to see because it's at one point. So I would change it to ten points over to the right. Here. Yeah. Just to see what that looks like. I don't know what ten points will look like on this scale. Yeah, that looks like it's okay. going to be okay. Okay, now deselect it and let's see what it looks like. Okay, so that does that work better for you? Yeah, yeah. That well, because works a lot now better. you're seeing the painting, but we're also seeing the text, 
and the font at the same time. And, and they're not interfering with each other. One's not trying to dominate the other one. Now they're working together. Okay, so again, let me try this again. If I do Highlight that, it. then yeah. I go to the T in the background here, Nope, right? you already did, because it's already highlighted, it looks like. Oh, oh yeah, bring it, you're right. Go to the T in the background, bring it to the front. And then go okay. to the to the little uh, uh, square below that with the red line through it. This is none. none. Yeah, so that gets rid of the fill. And then go to the stroke that's below the T. Yeah, right there. And then what did we put? We put 10 in there or something. And then go to the size. The, the, yeah, that okay. thing. And you're going to choose. I think we chose 10 points. Yeah. And you could choose a different color. See what that looks like. Try uh, the magenta. See what the or you this yeah, one? Try, yeah try that magenta and see what what it looks like. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Oh, because they're both highlighted now. Now they're oh. both magenta. You know what? I liked them better in the blue. The I first choice you did with the blue made much more sense with that background. They belong together. Okay. Yeah, I like that. That and and it's subtle so that you don't read it right away. Yeah, I like and, it. and I guess we could have changed the opacity in the fill as well and done the same kind of thing so that part of that background came through. But more than likely, let's see if we in order to change the opacity, we would have had to convert it to outlines and uh -huh. then change the opacity. But right now that looks pretty. I mean, I think that's a, a huge improvement because it doesn't compete with your background. And it's still readable. And that's what our goal is always to make it readable. And now I don't think you need the white bar there either. Really? Unless, unless you bring it all the way through going from one end to the other. Huh. Like to, okay, the edge of the, to the edge of the R at the top and to the edge of the J at the bottom. Let's so see that if it, I so it becomes a horizontal uh, space between the two. Yeah, just pull it straight up. It should be okay. Oh. I know, isn't that annoying when it does that? No, you're on the, as long as you're on that tool, you should be able to select it, but you have to go and select, right? Yeah, see, that's the thing about putting things on top of each other, because what it thinks you're trying to do is select the text. So you uh, need to, to, in order to select the bar, go back to your black pointer tool and then select the white bar where there is no text in between the J and the R either the top or the bottom. And then it, yeah. oh, no, it still selected the text box. Yes. Cause, uh, well, the text box. Oh, there. Well, if it is, isn't the bar just a single stroke, a line? Yeah. Yeah. And so you can see around the box, the box around the, the text, that means that it's selected. The text is selected, not the bar. Oh. Because if it was just the bar and you did it earlier, you did grab it. Yeah, oh, like that. Geez. There you go. Okay, now you have to go up to those anchor points right in the center. That and one? Just click and drag. Straight up. Let's see if that works. Yeah. And you can go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. I was thinking go from end to end. If you want that white bar there. It ha I think it has to be that. It can't be a random um, bar just laying there. Okay. Yeah, and I don't know how you feel about that now. Let's see. Yeah, I, I think it brings it together because you, I've got the white in the painting, the white and the yeah, silver. Yeah, the, the white is there. That makes sense. Yeah, it's not, that's not a bad thing to do. <clears throat> that's, that looks like it's okay. And also it looks, it, it looks like the center line going through the content of the page. Okay, that's pretty pretty good. I'm going to save it so I don't... Go save it under a different name so you can co compare the two. So you can okay. open both of them. So just can call it number two or something. Well, yeah, this was number eight already. So I'm Okay, so nine, nine is perfect. Okay, that's great. As long as you okay. get a different number so you can open them up and look at them and compare them next to each other. And then you make your decisions like that. Okay, I've got a question about one other piece I did. That is, uh, it's not a logo, but it's, um, you know, it's using a, a alcohol ink again. Mm -hmm. And then I want to put it, okay, can I just show you? Because there's just one question. Yeah, I have. yeah, yeah, share it. Okay, let me uh, find it. 
which would be this one. Looks like a lion. Yep. Okay, think outside the box. Okay, that's it. Then that's a, this is a nice um, design with the text itself, which kind of goes for with our when we get back from spring break. That's what we're doing is using um, text and things as emotional content or the the aspect of an emotional idea. And this scene, this is like exactly like that project. Okay. And wait, so you drew this, you painted this with that, using that same uh, oil Alco ink alcohol, technique? Alcohol ink, Al yeah. Yeah, not oil, alcohol. Alcohol inks. And and uh, I'm going to have to look into that next time. I mean, I'm just curious about it. I want to open the bottle and smell it. <laughs> See what it's like. You know, sometimes things that smell, I, I just don't like. Like oil paint is okay. I like that scent somewhat because I'm used to it. And it reminds me, it's nostalgic, reminding me of being in the studio and stuff. But, you know, if you walk into a room and it's really strong, it's not that great. Alcohol yeah. inks don't have much, really any smell at all to them, really. You know, they're just, it's just like a, they're tiny little bottles. Like you buy them, they're only about like two inches big. And you think, what can I do with that? But they're so strong. And then you put like a, you spray or you put an alcohol base with an eyedropper on the paper, and then you put like one or two drops, and then you get a straw and blow through it, and then it spreads all over the paper. Or so it, it's like a concentrate then. It's a real strong concentrate. And then you can do all sorts of things with it to, depending on how strong you wanna make it, or you can actually even paint with them. I can show you some of my other paintings I did that are more like, regular paintings not kind well, of isn't, abstract, it, isn't, this, isn't this a painting right here that we're yeah, looking this at? Is kind of a combination of the two i did the like the kind of the you know dropping it on the paper and you know blowing it all over the place first uh -huh. and then i let it dry and then i worked with a q-tip and this very tiny paintbrush to kind of spread the other around i might have used pen and ink a little bit for some of the like an alcohol pen i think for a few of the whiskers and things like that i, okay. I, I can't remember now because that yeah i was going to say that looks like there's a, quite a bit of control it yeah like the the ink itself just with the alcohol is better more for like backgrounds but then if you let it dry and then you just use a little tiny bit of it you can actually fill it in to do a you know, like an actual painting and things like that. Yeah, to me, that looks like a painting. Okay, I, I see that as a graphic or a painting, a painted image. Well, wait, I can show you one I did with alcohol inks that I have in my, oh wait, no wait, sorry, wrong one. <laughs> this more like a painting is, um, let me see. I just put these in here because I want to try to see what I can do with them on InDesign. Oh but yeah, no, was, you should definitely think about using the, the stuff that you make. But, um, oh gosh, where is it? Wait. I'm trying to find it because they, they weren't, this is only showing me, I don't know. Maybe I'll just have to show you next time because I, I, I trying to find things that were just JPEG files and they're not showing up on it for some yeah, reason. Yeah, that's all, that's all InDesign. Well, yeah, that's, okay. that might anyway. be because you're in the InDesign folder or in, in the InDesign program. Uh, okay. Anyway, my question for this one, you know, like it says outside the box. So I thought I wanted to make this look more like a three, you know, three dimensional box, you know, like I wanted to, instead of a flat box, oh. I wanted because oh, okay. So, and that's why you use the gradient because you wanted it to appear um, yes. to have a three dimensional quality about it. Okay. So, so I wanted to make, extend the line going like here, you know, to there. So it looked more like a cube. I guess in, in that case, if you wanted, if you, if you wanted to have a box in the background, you actually have to build a box. That means that you would have to use planes. Um, five planes more than likely because you wouldn't use the back the cover but you would put in the walls or you could probably get by with three you could use just use one in the a, a diagonal in the upper left hand corner 
coming down about three inches and then have that wall um, or the, a line from that bottom of that point run across the horizontal plane and then one against the vertical plane on the left-hand side. And if you did those in each one of those as a shape, and if you use the gradient on those, you could create that sense that it's light at the top and darker at the bottom towards the box. And then you would have the last rectangle, which could be the gradient coming from the lower left to the <laughs> upper right. I understand nothing of what you said. You but... want me to illustrate it? Well, I can do that. Share my, give me your screen back. I'll draw it I, for you. If I sent this to you, could you demonstrate to me how to do it? Well, no, you could just unshare your screen and I'll show you exactly how to do it. And I'll okay. share my screen and I'll make it on my screen. Because okay. all we're making is a box for you to put your picture in. Okay, let me just uh, stop sharing. Let me see. Where do I find that? It should be at the top. Um, yeah, the thing is I've got our... Um, Wait. It's okay. You can take your time. Oh, stop share. Okay, I see it. Don't okay. worry. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to make that for you now in in design. Thank and you. And those are those are just simple boxes. So I'm just going to take this thing and push those away. Okay, so this is what you had done. Use this shape, and we want our rectangle tool. So I'm going to say you did this, okay? You made this as a as a background box, right? Let's snap to it, and we're going to put the gradient in there, right? Well, what I did was I I used the box with the X in it, the cross in it, and then I put an image inside it. But then I'll make what well, you yeah, want but that to. that would go in on the top. That's the last thing you would do because that because now oh, you're okay. making the background. Okay. That's my, at least that's how I'm thinking of it. Where's my gradient palette though? I don't see it. Oh, well, maybe I have to click on my colors to get it or just insert it. Insert the gradient and see if we get color. Opposite the way I wanted it to go. I wanted it to be dark down here because this is the way I was imagining what you were saying. Okay, so that's the background. So I'm gonna deselect that. And then I'm gonna to go to my pen tool and I'm gonna take a line that comes down diagonally like that. Cause now we're making the wall of a box, right? And I'm uh -huh. gonna make it a, a complete object by itself. And now I'm gonna say with the gradient tool, now that I have that. Oh, wait, how do I make it? Uh, you're saying make it a complete object by itself. Oh, okay, let me back up. Let me uh, go and undo all that and start again. Okay, so one more. Okay, so it's deselected now. This this is a box that's already deselected and it's it's already has a gradient in it. So now I'm going to the pen tool. I'm inserting an anchor point right here in the upper left hand corner, and I'm going diagonally because I'm thinking I'm going to make it parallel to this lower corner. So I'm aiming for that that diagonal line. And then I'm going straight across horizontally to the right hand side. And this is going to be one edge of the box. You could do this thing, you could have made five sides, but I'm doing I'm thinking this is a, a faster way to do it. And and it makes it larger for you to put your photograph in there. So now that it's selected, I'm going to go back to my little tool there, make sure it's selected, my black arrow tool, and go to the gradient. And which one was it? Did it start with black? I think it started, no, it ended with black, didn't it? Yeah, that's not what I wanted. I think it did end with black. So I'm starting at the top and dragging it down to there. So now it's black like that, right? Okay. Now that's one side of the box. So I'm gonna deselect that. And then I'm gonna go back with the pen tool and I'm gonna go right over that and make another anchor point and go to that same corner, which is off. I missed it by that much, which I can get right in there and get to that corner. And then I'm gonna go down to this straight line here. And that's not quite straight. If I had my grid out there, I would have made it straight, but for illustration purposes. And then I came back and closed it at the point where I began. 
that's closing the, the shape that I'm making. So now it can't join to other shapes and, and convert its color and content to other shapes. So that's why I close it. And then I'm gonna to go to the gradient tool and uh, have it be white to black, right? Did I, did I figure that out? I think I did, I said white to black, right? So it's like that. Then your picture goes in there. So it looks like a frame almost. Okay. Maybe, maybe this is too, um, maybe I want this lighter, the one in the background. So maybe that I'm gonna to go to my gradient and, and take it so that it goes like maybe this. Whoops, forgot that that's the black out there. So I had to go to my white and drop my gradient down there. So there's more white up here. So this huh. looks like, and then you would have a, on this one, we'll put a stroke on it. Well, do we want a stroke? No, I don't know. And, and maybe I don't want this as deep a tone, either of those. I want them to be less significant as, as uh, because they're, they're meant to be vertical planes. So right now they look pretty severe it, with the gradient the way I did it. So maybe I only want to go to right there. Maybe I want to pull it down to there. Oops, wrong thing. I didn't know I this is still selecting the whole box. I need to just select this box. Nope. Okay, you move side. Now I'm just going to select. And that's what I do. When I can't select it fast enough, you can either go and look at the outlines of stuff and then select it, or I just push it out of the way and go and grab the thing that I'm looking for and then reassemble it. And, and the thing I'm thinking is I want this to be lighter like that. Yeah, I don't want that to be as harsh as it was. And I don't want this one to be as harsh as it was either. I want them to be a little bit more subtle because I think that's what it would look like. And then take my little box. And well, I guess I should clean up that corner there because it's so annoying. So that means I got to take my glasses off because they don't see well enough. And I got to zoom, click on this and zoom into that anchor point because that's the anchor point I'm looking at. I don't want that white gap, noise me. Little things like that. I know, oh. mo wouldn't annoy most people <laughs> right away for this thing, but you know what, we can fix it. So when we can fix it, we do. And then, oh. and then I need to take the stroke off of it. So where we had no stroke before, I'm going to take bring that stroke to the front and tell it, no, it's not what I wanted. I want this to the front and no stroke. And it's telling me no fill. Automatically, I have a stroke on that. I don't like that. That doesn't seem like we, don't, we should have that. I want those strokes gone. No, I guess I can't remove that. I should be able to, and I know I should be able to figure that out. Why can't I move that property palette right there? That's what I want. You, what, bring to the front. Oh, so if I reverse that, no, that's not doing it. Because that is the gradient right there. Okay, I see it. All right, I made them with strokes in the beginning. Um, okay, so now let me zoom back out. Well, too far. Space bar for the hand tool and just readjust it. And now I'm going to grab this shape and slide it back into underneath that. Well, it should have gone. Yeah, I guess that was okay. Because I have that white border all the way, way around that I don't like that white border, but it is what it is. Okay, so then I would have put your picture in here. So this looks like it's a box going to this plane down here. Okay. Now, if you wanted it to look like uh, five sides, like you opened a cardboard box and you're looking into it and you don't have the flaps on it, then, then you would have added another side here and another side down there and put the picture in the center. So I would not, be, this is not something I could cut and paste and put into what I've already done. This yeah, would yeah, you can put this, oh, yeah, yeah, you can put this right on top. You can make these shapes because these are just simple shapes. Okay. They're, they're individual shapes. This is just one shape here, and this is one shape here, and this is the thing we had in the background. 
and we just and I just moved them on to the page. Well, thank you. That's, um, I hope that's that really made good. sense. I mean, I'm going to have to really take some time with it. It's not like I could just go, oh, okay, <laughs> do it. I mean, yeah, I you do. Know. You do have to probably spend a little time. But it, but it's good, and I'll probably send in what I've done already without doing this, and then maybe during the break or something, I can play around with this. Oh so yeah, that, that's what this. Getting. That's what this is for. That's all this was about was playing around. Okay. To, to meet those requirements or to make our guessing game work. Thank you. You're welcome. You know, and this could have been just a line too. Maybe we wanted that white right there. So we could have taken that line tool and we don't even have that shape. So it's bright on that corner and just put a stroke in there like that. So that looks like a corner of a something, but then we'd have to change the value tone right there. It can't be the same as that value tone. Anyway, it's just building a box. Um, okay, so I'll stop sharing my screen. So whoever else wanted to share stuff, you could do that. Anybody else want to share stuff? No. Okay, then I'll share some more because I want to go over for your next assignment. I do want to go through the, uh, let's see. Um, here we go. This is our class. We'll go there because I think if I go into our class, Am I going to be able to edit this? No, I have to go set it up first before I can actually go here. Yeah, because this is all sharing the screen thing and, and do I, I can't move it. Yes, I can. Oh, good. So um, if I go here back to Canvas, yeah, okay, this is in Canvas. All right, so then we'll go to modules. And I just wanted to, sh to go over the examples that were covered in the next assignment, which is what, that, where did the campaign, did we do the campaign poster yet? No, we're doing these things, right? Oh, wait, this is, oh, this is the week we're supposed to be doing the campaign poster, but that doesn't make sense. Because I, I think these make more sense with your logos. This, maybe I should change the, the exercise here. So anyway, this is the samples that I was talking about, about uh, coupons and using shapes and things. And we're, this is why I was creating that circle for you. And, and there, oh, I should go back and show you how they did that. And then of course, liquidation sales. So these are all just flash ads. I think of them as when going out of business sales and, and other things that are sent sometimes through the mail and sometimes you see on the street. But what I wanted you to think about for these things was the, what I wanted to introduce you to was uh, typing inside shapes and, and creating borders and text like that for, I guess, uh, like they said, what did they call them? Flash coupons or coupon samples. Anyway, that's, that's where I was going with showing you that. But I guess uh, the next assignment I made back to those modules was the campaign thing but um because we do have a campaign coming up in may don't we have to go vote or something at least i think i do and for sure we have it in november it's coming up so um yeah because this is where we are now doing our logos in march 26th which is today or this around this time is what we're supposed to be doing and then yeah this would be this uh, we're we're not going to do it on april 2nd because i have to change the dates on this because we're out of class so i will go and rechange these and you guys just have to finish your logos for this week wait that's not right because we're yeah we are on the 26th huh where's the calendar i have to see what's next i have to check that calendar to find out and i have to move you guys out of the way in order to get to my calendar. So yeah, we will meet again on the 31st. And today we're supposed to be finishing the logo. So I should move that campaign poster. Oh, let me go back and look at those modules first. Uh, yeah, typography, yeah, I okay. guess those all By make today, sense. To, between today and Sunday, I think it was, we're supposed to 
hand in our logos yes. and whatever we're working. Yeah, okay. so then, so next week we'll work on the campaign poster, which I would give you two weeks for. So that means I'm going to, I mean, uh, I can't have you do it. I can't request you to do it over spring break. So that means in the middle of April, it will be due. But we'll start it after, it'll be our assignment that we're beginning uh, next week and we will be meeting about on the 31st because that is that's what it said right 31st is thursday yes because april fools is friday and don't ask okay. me what happens then but something does okay yeah so this will be our campaign poster beginning day and then we'll skip the seventh because we're on holiday and we'll make it due on the 14th or actually due on the 18th or something like that but we'll be working on it that week also Okay, does that make sense? So, um, and so yeah, I guess complete your logos uh, and turn them in and then think about what sketch ideas for, for what you'd want to do for a campaign because uh, we don't get to elect that judge that they're appointing to the Supreme Court, but they are appointing one. <laughs> <laughs> we should have a campaign to, to remove Putin from office. <laughs> I don't know how to go about that, but uh, that could be a campaign flyer. And it might be really nice to make those and send them to him. He's the little, he's the little pooty. Okay, so I'll stop sharing. So anybody else wants to share? I just wanted to go over, I wanted, what I wanted to do was show you that, and, and I should do that. Actually, I shouldn't shop, stop sharing because I want to go back over those typing in, in shapes from the, the little um, coupons that I was talking about, like this kind of thing right here. Yeah. You bring that to the front. And, and when you want to go type in that, um, you would you just take your type tool and you don't type in a, as it, if it's in a path. You, you move the cursor into that shape and you can see that the type tool or the type uh, cursor itself now has a circle around it. That means when you insert that, it's gonna start typing in there automatically. And, and uh, we can go change the size of it, but it's going to be contained within that shape. And that's how they got all that text in those shapes or a lot of it, because it can also be typed on a path and put on top of the shape, which is not, a. I mean, either one of those options is okay, but I do want you to know that when you hold the cursor over a shape, it's gonna change into that kind of form. So I wanna bump that down here so I can have that into the center and then center it. But um, I guess what I wanna point out is how a shape contains the work also. So we're gonna return that and then keep pasting it. And you can see that it will fill it'll fill the shape as much as it can. Now, what, what it does do and you need to pay attention to is that it will add characters until it reaches the end of the border. And then when it does that, it will automatically go to the next line and insert those characters in there. So I could have kept a, a character up here with the ASD or whatever, something like that, and that will be fine but it is all gonna be contained in that shape until you get to this point right down here where there says there's too much content. So you can either go and eliminate the content and that was one character too much, or at that point, if you had another box that you were continuing as a, as a, um, uh, a thread, a text thread, you would make another click and just drag with the text tool and create another box and all of that content from this box will transfer into that box or that not all of, I shouldn't say all of the content from this box, all of the content that is extra that could not fit in this box will transfer into the new box. So it will be continuous and that's a text thread. And you would use those kinds of things if you had pictures in, in your, um, on your page and you want, had an article that you were inserting in there as well.
So you'd make one text box, fill it with that content, and then go on to the next page or the next box around the picture. And the, and the text will follow it around the picture. And I guess we should do wraparounds eventually. But what I wanted you to know just for that assignment that I was talking about, about the, um, the ads or the, the flash ads, is that this is how they got that content in there, into those shapes. And then of course, if it was a horizontal thing, like uh, it was this shape here that we were doing and then inserted your cursor in there, Will it go? No, because it's not selected, huh? Wait a minute. Which one is selected? I want that one selected. Oh, that's not a line. I already did. Oh, it's up here. That's where I put it. That, there's no longer a box there. I moved it. Okay. Okay, so going back in here and inserting in that, it's going to do the same thing as what it did there as, as the circle that I had placed that in. And then I'm going to change the scale of that so that it fills this completely. What's that? It's going to be 12 point, right? Because that's always the default. So we'll make it 30 so you can see it. And so it fills that. And then you could see you would space it out along this edge. If that was the case, they used a triangle form. And so they did the same sort of thing I did here. And then they what? They went like this and changed the angle of it in one of those, one of the forms that was there. And that's all it was, it was just changing the angle. Okay. Okay. I know this is all gonna be recorded and stuff and you guys will be able to see that. Oh, it's going in there now, it's going in there. I should be able to space that out. Okay, so it just moves around inside that, can, that particular shape box. And I guess we can go over this later, but this is all just about that stuff. And I just wanted you to be aware. It's just the more stuff I give you, the more options I think you have so that you're educated and making interesting stuff. Okay. Okay. No one else even talks but you, Jeannie. It's like it's like me and you are the only people in this class. Victor, I, I are you have there? A private tutor. It's yes, just, private like... tutor. Nobody wants to talk. I know Jacob's there. He's watching this, going, "Oh my God, I'm sleeping through this." But what happened to do was it? I'm sorry, his name Fam uh, or Fan. He wanted to show you. He sent you something and wanted to. Dad, yeah, you wanted to show me something, Dad. Are you ready to share it, or do you want me to go find it in in the canvas? submissions uh if you can <laughs> i would wait. appreciate it wait do you want me to go find it in the canvas then yes okay okay so i have to stop sharing to go find a new page i mean to get out of that because i don't know how to do that i don't think so that's not it this is this is where we are that's where we were and i want canvas um, that's the modules. Okay, so this should be able to do it because I should be able to open them. And I should be able to go look at so you submit and it was a logo you submitted right that. Yes. Okay, so should be here. That should be the assignment. And I should be able to move this out of the way. So whoop, I got to move you guys so I can go to the speedy grader and find everybody in here. So I can just go flicking through here. But it, or do you want me to show you what other people have already submitted? Because you guys don't get to see that. That all would be time, really good. You? Yeah, so here's, uh, this is Jacobs. And he did the um, PJ. And, and turned it into this interesting shape, which almost becomes, to me, it becomes a, um, a geometric, really interesting geometric shape. And, and this could totally be a logo. Um, and there's other things you could do with this. Like he changed obviously the colors of the J and the P to blue and red. But you could also take the, on this black one up here, you could take the inside, put a shape inside this P area 
and put a gradient in there of two colors or even just one color, which would even change it more. And so there's a whole bunch of things that can be done with this. This is such a simple logo that there's, you could do tons of things with it. It's a good logo. Okay, so that was, that's number, that was our 13 of our 23rd person. So I guess I have to keep going through here. I don't know where this one is. This is the InDesign logo. I don't see where it's going. Oh, maybe it's going to launch InDesign or show up there. Nope, I can't down. Some of these they don't download, but they'll download in InDesign when I'm not in Zoom, but not here. I mean, if they were JPEGs, they might open up for us for you guys to see. Was that you I just zipped by, Jeannie? I think you're in there. No. Here you go. This is the one you did. Oh, yeah. This, and I did talk about it. I thought that was you. And this is why I, I was interested. And I made a little comment about his T upside down, which I thought was a great graphic to have the A oh. horizontal and the T upside down for his name. As a, and with the box around it was a, a really nice logo. I don't know that it needs this. This is interesting as a shadow, but I don't know that it needs to be there. Just this line here that somewhat contains it. And then the three letters would make it a nice logo, I think. But I like that. I like using, I mean, this was nice too, with the simple graphics with the drop shadow. But this is far more interesting with the um, changing it going vertical, horizontal, and then upside down. That's so cool with the exclamation point, though. It almost looks like a gate. Like It does. It looks, like it, it, it like looks it. like it's keeping all the words in there, the letters in there. It's so um, cool. But it, but I'm not sure because it looks so different. I don't know that it needed to be there, but I'd like to see it without it and then have both of them. I mean, we'll have it right next to it, like, because you could just copy this and remove that and then have them compare next to them and see how that is. But anyway, anything you wanted to say about that? Uh, well, the, the, the blue one actually is the pencil because I want to make my logo related to the, the drawing artist or something like that. Uh huh. Yeah, so... And wait, actually, wait, is, that, is that this one? Is this the one you're talking about or this one? Both. Okay. Yeah, so uh, the, the, the first one, uh, I, I used Photoshop to paint uh, the, uh -huh. the, the, yeah, the, the, the drop, the drop like effect. Like okay. the, the, the painting is uh, falling down. <laughs> All right, so this is the paint dripping down, right? It's dripping down. Yeah, and that's dripping down on the side and then puddling on the bottom. Well, here, let me magnify this so you so everybody can see that. So that that helps, I hope, because I see it, but I, I wanted everyone else to see this. Come on, move. How come I can't move that? There we go. Yeah, so this is a splash of paint that comes down here and over the letter and comes down the side and then puddles down here. Right? That's what you yeah. wanted to see. You know, yeah, and... and um, this would work much better if we if you make that paint drip wider and thicker. Uh-huh. So that we can so everybody can see what it is. <laughs> right now it looks like a line that's cutting through with the shadow, but I like the idea of what you're doing to make it look three-dimensional and have the the paint flow off the top of that curve and then drip down over the uh that letter and then splash on or puddle. I guess it's not splashing, it's puddling on the bottom. <laughs> That's a nice, it's a great concept. It needs to be thicker in order to pull it off. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. At, at first that, I, I intended to make it thicker, but uh, I, I have no idea to like, I have no uh, idea to paint uh, the, 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 the painting that drop to uh -huh. make it um, like, like I, I don't know that the see the out of the of the painting that 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 was thicker. Yeah. Um. Is that done in Photoshop? Uh the the painting that the, the dripping is up uh, doing in Photoshop. Okay. So you should be able to change the. Um. Let's see. If you in Photoshop, if you go to the uh, edit palette and choose transform. I think, and free transform or yeah, free transform. You should be able to just, I think it'll put a box around it and you can grab one of the sides of it and just pull uh -huh. it 
wider and it becomes um, a wider mark or uh -huh. a wider shape and then it might work but you know i'd have i'd have to see you doing it and i mean if you want to do it in photoshop <laughs> and share your screen that would be okay too but um we could probably figure out how to do that but yeah i know, yeah. I know in photoshop you can adjust that easily yeah okay and then it would and then it would look i mean that puddle on the bottom we want that to um i think it should be yeah much much bigger so we can see that that paint is dripping and it's out of control uh-huh okay that would be really nice i mean i like the idea i like the concept that you're using there with that because for because on the con the the logo itself with the characters they have that fresh painterly look to them like they're gestural and then with the paint dripping it's it's a nice effect as well they go together okay thank you can i ask that how did you get that font what what font was that uh what font uh yeah. I think it's a script, some kind of script or something like that. It, it was in the InDesign or it was somewhere yeah. else? InDesign. Yeah. Really? And then did you just use a drop shadow or did you copy and paste it and move it behind? Uh, I think it's a copy. I, I copy it. It looks like it. Yeah, I think you did too. But it works. It works great. You did a nice job. Good job. Okay, thank you, Professor. You're welcome. Oh, should I? So many uh, talented people here. Yeah, we have imaginative people. Okay, do I, does, do I, should I keep going? Let's see if there's other pictures here that people want to see, but I know I have to zoom out, right? Because you guys can't see my screen. Well, that's a little too small. So I don't know who else put stuff in there. Look, there's stuff stuck on my screen now. Have I been spitting on my screen? I don't think so. This is a nice logo too. I like that. Huh. The Teresa did. Just a simple with the nice racing stripes. Like it looks like a uh, uh, a little Mini Cooper stripes. That's really good. How do you yeah. do that? How do you add that? Just as a, a it's line just white white shapes on top of it. I assume. Okay white stripes because the background's white right so you wouldn't be yeah. able to uh, discern either of them no stroke for sure if that was the way they did it but more than likely they did and let's see what this was oh yeah whiskey this was this was a nice little uh this reminds me of your your uh alcohol ink because <laughs> it's on fire <laughs> And then of course yeah. fire water, but it, that's a this is a really nice shape, a nice graphic shape that they drew there to illustrate a flame. Mm -hmm. Looks really nice and a simple bottle. Nice, nice job altogether. I don't like whiskey myself, not my drink, but um, <laughs> I like looking at this graphic. Okay, so there's a lot of people who have not submitted that. So this week you guys are going to be submitting stuff. And this looks like this is Robin's from last week that we looked at and, and fixed and she submitted her stuff. Oh, wait, there were more, I think. Yeah, she did have more. Yeah, these are pretty nice too. Just simple. And this was the, what I was just illustrating to you about typing on a path. She was doing that. Uh huh. So that was actually three paths because um, she had it in the center and then and then on the uh, the top and on the bottom, and obviously she is the queen, right? Because <laughs> and that's a nice graphic for a crown, because if you know uh, Basquiat's work, right? It looks a lot, I mean he uses a crown in his artwork. He uses a crown or did use a crown before he died a lot and that kind of reminds me of that except that this one is a little bit more flamboyant his are really uh gutturally graphic quickly drawn okay so i think i started yeah oh yeah this is where i started okay so that's all the ones that we have that have been turned in so far and i'm and i think it's good for you guys to see your fellow students work so you can get ideas and you can see what's being produced Let's see what this one is. I didn't check that second one. I mean, I did, but is there anything on the bottom? Oh yeah, look, look at this. 
Ooh. That's a nice graphic there too. And here it's just simple uh, drawn JP. Huh. And then this one with it with it being it almost looks like uh, um, what's the digital guys um, the the icons that they're doing now um, that I see it frequently, but it has that same quality like Invader or something. Some of his work. So both of those are nice. Yeah, and that was where we began. So that's where we started. Okay, any other questions, you guys? No. I'm stop sharing. Okay, so now you need to work on your logos and then submit them. But you, oh, I, you... I found the other alcohol ink things if you want to see them. Yeah, yeah, show them, share, okay. share your screen. Okay. I, I did quit okay. sharing, yeah, I quit sharing. Okay, well, this is an example of just the, the drop dropping it, you know, on the screen. In oh, order so so it, it does have that quality of being like watercolor. Okay, where yes. do these white lines come from? That was afterwards. I used a uh, just a, a pen tool, you know, that had um, I don't know what they call it. You know, it, anyway, it's just something that I, after it dried, then you can write over it either with an ink pen, you know, or with uh, this is. It looks fluid. Yeah, it's a it's a fluid thing. I don't know what they call it now. Um, well, if it's anyway. pen, pen and ink would be fluid. Yeah, it's something like a pen and ink, but it was a little bit thicker. So I just made lines on the leaves and things like that with that. Right, and I could describe that. Then you okay. can, let me see, I'll stop that. Well, wait, 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 back up. No, oh, go back. Oh, you want to see it again? Yeah, because okay. I have a question. Because it looks sure. like, share, reshare that. Okay, inside the these centers, they look like a different color kind of, is that the same kind of ink or is that different paint? Because they no, look- it's all alcohol ink. Like when it, when you draw, like you'll put a patch of alcohol down. Yes. A plain alcohol, like you know, uh, rubbing alcohol or whatever they, they sell, you know, to disinfect your hands. And uh -huh. you take your dropper and you drop little bits on and then you play with it and see where you know like with a you can use a brush to kind of nudge it along the path or uh -huh. you can use a straw to blow on it you know right and then you let that dry and then in the middle say where it's orange yes. i put down another drop of alcohol and you see how it spreads outside the outline right here you know and then within this i put down a second color like a little more orangey so you're playing and you're seeing what develops okay where so, does the white come from at the end the in the center all those, these white things yeah I, those let the whole, I let the whole thing dry and then i used i don't know it's like i i can't remember what they call them now you know they're like a little uh it looks almost like a pen marker but with white out inside it and then you use it to like you know dot just put little dots down like that okay so it's a pen because it the reason i'm asking because it looks like there's i can see reflective dots on them so it looks to me like they were raised drops that's and, and yes. i don't know if that's a graphic effect or no. if that's or no, that art they are actually raised because okay. it's a, a pen okay, tool that's how it that looks. has almost like white out in it okay and all right that's i good. used the same things here you know to make those lines okay all right, um, that, that was my only question because it looked like they were thicker and they were raised off the surface. And and I was just curious uh, if that was a graphic effect or if that was a, um, if it was really that. So now I know it's really that. And okay. this was done on canvas board, like what you would do a, a, an acrylic or oil painting on. Oh yeah, no, I can, you can I see can a little see. bit the side of it, but yeah. I, I painted over it first with a wall sealer and got it to do that. But then you can use the same alcohol inks. I'll show you this other one to right. um, do like like this. This is uh, I I I. It's a lot more controlled. So I put down very tiny amounts of of you know alcohol first, and would drop a little tiny. I would get a Q-tip uh, wet with the ink and then touch it to the alcohol. And that way you had a lot more control over it. 
And then, so then it would it would bleed when you did that. Yeah. And okay. so it would bleed the color on, and you could kind of almost paint with the Q-tip to make the colors. And when the mm -hmm. whole thing dried, I just used a, a ink pen to go over and make to do the line trick. work. Yeah, to yeah. isolate and do the line work. Okay. No, that's great. And the same. How big is that? Thing. How big are these things? Um, they're usually not too big. Um, these were more like the size of a, uh, you know, of, of a A4 paper, something like that. Oh, okay. All right. So eight and a half by 11 or yeah, that's A4, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. Then I, then the last one was this one, which is more like actual just painting with it. So. Oh yeah. I like that. Oh yeah. You should look up, uh, um, what's the painter's name? Uh, Catherine, um, Bernhardt. Oh, okay, I'll write it down. Catherine Bernhardt. Yeah, well, she does a lot of uh, toucans and uh, and um, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, they're not bananas. They're the green ones. Parrots. <laughs> no, the the fruit. Um, not a banana. It's a when you get them in the store. Plantains. Oh, oh. But okay. other things too. She does a lot of. She paints like that. They look a lot like that. Okay. Um, anybody else want anything to uh, um, to share or ask questions? Nobody. We're going to call it a night then. You guys get to go work now. Now you're in your lab. This is your lab time. Um, but you know, I should. I, if you want, you can email me if you want to have. Uh, or do you want me to stick around so in case you guys have questions, or do you want to just work? What do you want to do? Well, I want to send in the stuff I already did and then go back and look over the stuff that I still want to work on and see, you know. Well, okay, that's that's perfect for lab time. But I do want you to send in the two that we did in class where you where you had changed the black to the blue. So I okay. want to see both of those, okay? Okay. That'll be great. All, All right. right All right, you guys, then we're done. It's eight o'clock. That's, that's about normal. We had a two-hour lecture. Now you get a two-hour lab. And and then uh, have a glass of wine. I guess you can drink wine while you're working if you wanted to. It doesn't <laughs> because you're, everybody's at home. Yeah, it's everybody's safe at home. That's okay. You can do whatever you want. Coffee, tea, eat food. Food is good too. <laughs> okay, All then right. well, goodbye. All right, then we'll see you next week. So next week we do have class, okay? All right. Okay, just want to make sure you're aware of that. The 31st, March 31st. So I'll see you guys next week. All right. Bye, everybody. Are you guys all there? Victor, okay. you there? Have a good all one, Melissa. All right. You too. Thanks, Dad. Bye, you guys. Yes, I'm right here. Uh, yeah. We're, are you, do you have any questions, Victor? No. I, no. Are you working so, on your so logos? I finished with them. I did turn them in today. Oh, good. You send them in today. Okay. I'll check it out. Great. So is class is over now? Yep, class is over. Okay, because my computer is dying right now. Okay, now you got, well, you have two hours still really to work if you want to make more logos and, in, and improve anything, okay? Okay, bye. All right, bye.